Welcome to Vibrant Living Conversations. I'm your host, Gemma Putty. I'm so excited to be bringing conversations from North Idaho and across this region to support us all in glowing from the inside out by connecting more deeply to ourselves, our earth, and our community. For this interview, I am talking with Sarah Peters of Tended Roots Wellness, who provides craniosacral therapy and who has recently moved from city life to homestead life here in North Idaho to follow her passions and calling. I got to experience her healing gifts last week and even work, she even worked on my unborn baby, which was so thrilling. And I'm so happy to have her here just to learn more and talk more about this awesome modality. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Gemma. I feel really honored to be here. My absolute pleasure. So let's dive in. And I know I said this to you when I first met you is craniosacral. Like I've heard of it, but so when you first meet someone, someone's like, Sarah, what is craniosacral? How do you respond to that? Yeah, craniosacral is a very hard thing to kind of sum up, but, you know, just um, sort of a summary is it's working with the structures and tissues that make up and surround the central nervous system. And by working with this system, we can restore balance and fluidity to the body and the mind and the spirit. Love that. Awesome. Perfect. The whole thing, holistically, yeah, right? That's right. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So what is your background story to finding craniosacral? Um, and I know you had a career change and in going into this and learning about it. Will you tell us, yeah, your journey to getting to where you are now and having this business? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was actually going to school to be a registered nurse and was, you know, finishing up my training and had taken some time off when my babies were born. And, um, and when my son, my youngest was about 18 months old, um, he developed some pretty uh, severe health issues. He ended up developing actually sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. And um, we, I mean, I took him into so many different doctors for like a year and a half trying to get this properly diagnosed and was just really kind of blown off by the doctors that we saw. And um, finally, I switched pediatricians again and kind of went in like, you know, very vigilant and like, I, we have to figure this out. Um, because, you know, when you haven't slept for a year and a half, you start to think, well, maybe it is just me. Maybe it's, you know, <laughs> maybe yeah. it isn't me. <laughs> um, right. And so I, this new pediatrician, we took him to where we finally got the apnea diagnosed and he was actually having apnea like every four minutes when he was sleeping and, you know, really not growing at all. Wow. Um, he was like 21 pounds when he turned four, he was just tiny. Wow. And um, this new pediatrician, they had a behavioral specialist. And so through this time where he wasn't sleeping, he developed pretty severe obsessive compulsive disorder. And so just, you know, very classic, like he was scared of germs. He didn't want to go play outside. When we had a change, like my daughter starting school, he, you know, would like brush his teeth till his gums blood. Just was really kind of classic compulsions. And um, so I took him in more just like, I just wanted to talk to somebody and just say, okay, here's what we're doing. How can I help this kid? And, you know, should we see a counselor? And the behavioral specialist did not he didn't interact with my son. He didn't even observe him, didn't even like talk to him, just listen to me and then just wanted to put him on Prozac. He was three at the time and then treated me as a very negligent parent when I wouldn't do it. And so um, I was really discouraged through that whole, you know, year and a half process working with doctors and just kind of like, this isn't what I wanted to do. Like the medical community is not set up to be able to connect with people, which is what I was looking for. I know now, you know, mm -hmm. and so, um, I was really discouraged. And then a friend of mine, uh, she was like, Oh, you should take him to this guy. We take our daughter to it's craniosacral. I'd never heard of it. And, you know, I kind of looked it up online and this was, you know, like, I don't know, 12 years ago or so now, 13 years ago. And, didn't really find much online at that time about craniosacral. And what I did find was pretty dismissive of craniosacral. But, mm. you know, at that point we were pretty desperate. I'm like, I'll try anything to help right. him. And um, so we took him to this practitioner and he, I mean, we left with a new kid. Like his compulsions were gone with that first treatment. Wow. And kids do respond just super quick to craniosacral. Their little systems are so much closer to balance than ours are. I think they mm -hmm. respond faster and it takes less work. And, um, 
And so that's how I discovered it. And, you know, I remember just like telling my husband, like, I think I know what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so then as soon as my son started in school, I went and got my uh, massage practitioner license uh, in order to pursue my craniosacral career. And so I graduated from that in August and I started my craniosacral training in September um, of that year. And the program that I chose was a certification program. Um, it was very intense. It took me about a year and a half, two years to get through. Um, it was basically kind of set up to mirror like a graduate type program. So okay. it was a lot of work, a lot of client records, case studies, and then just a lot of like work on yourself too, because with craniosacral, when you're working with clients, um, it does bring up emotional things a lot for people right. and there's also times where you know you could be sitting holding one technique for a really long time and it's quiet and that's when things like that you haven't dealt with tend to come up for you so you know just just like learning to deal with all of that learning to separate like what am I feeling is this what I'm feeling or is this like what I'm picking up from my client, um, oh, yeah. you know, that kind of work. So it was intense, but just, I, I'm so glad I did it. So, and you were, I mean, you must have been studying all anatomy and then, yes. I mean, with the emotional piece, what were you, was that, was it mostly anatomy? I can't, I'm, just trying to wrap my brain around the extent of what you must have been looking Yeah, learning. it was extensive. And the, I mean, there is a lot of anatomy, a lot of really detailed anatomy, you know, like, you know, cranial anatomy, the cranial nerves, um, the parts of the brain, all of the nervous system, the different parts of our nervous system, you know, and that gets pretty intense. There's a lot to that. But then there was a lot of work too on, you know, working with PTSD and trauma and how to you know, uh, help clients through that when something comes up, because that can be scary for them and for a practitioner, if you don't know how to deal with that, if somebody has, you know, something come up during a session. Um, so yeah, definitely a lot of that too, a lot. I mean, our, our training, it was very interesting. Like we started every class with like an hour of mindfulness meditation, Wow. But then, you know, would delve into like slides and, and all the anatomy stuff and all of the very, you know, scientific type of, of things. And then it was just, you know, a lot of both, a lot of back and forth between the two. Wow. Wow. And we had talked, I had brought it up, I think, because I'm so fascinated by the chakras and how they really seem to relate to certain areas of trauma and, and obviously healing and enlightenment and energy and all of that. But so with like PTSD clients, do you find that there's a certain area in their body that when you're holding space for working there, that is where that specific trigger will come up? Or does it vary in different people? I'd say it can be. I mean, it's very typical of somebody who has had, you know, say an abusive childhood to have issues with like first chakra area, like low back type of, you know, sciatica type of issues, just because that's sort of our tribal roots, you know, our, you know, yeah, if someone exactly. was, was betrayed in those like fundamental growing times, that can be an issue. But when working with trauma, it's not necessarily going to come out like that either you know it Absolutely. could be it, and there is it's interesting there's just a this sounds so crazy a quality to trauma that okay. you can feel when you're working with the system and it I could be that. anywhere a lot of times it's just you know a lot of what I do is working with the cerebrospinal fluid so okay. just initially like when I check in with somebody like I'll have the core link where I have their sacrum on one side and their head on the other and just feeling how that fluid's flowing back and forth Generally, you can kind of pick up on like, okay, there's trauma in the system at that time. If it's like Absolutely. that kind of emotional PTSD trauma, if it's like trauma, physical trauma, it tends to be more at the area, obviously, of injury. I see. Okay. Fascinating. Fascinating. Love it. So once you finished school, you started your practice over in Seattle, right? Or the yes. Seattle area, at least. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. so I had my own practice over there for about uh, eight years, and it was just amazing. I had just amazing clients, and that was definitely the hardest part of moving was, you know, it was leaving my practice. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. And then you were called, I, I, I don't know that I said that right, but it seemed like yeah. you had said just being living sustainably and off the land and 
being more connected in different ways that maybe a more urban area could do for you. You were called to being like, you know what, let's try a different yeah. life. And now you're over here in North Idaho. That's right. Yeah. We just really, I mean, we've talked about it forever, me and my husband and, um, you know, the world is changing and it just felt like, okay, now's the time to, you know, let's, uh, let's do this. And so, yeah, we came over and started homesteading. We've been here just, it'll be a year on the 24th. So coming up on our, our yeah anniversary, (laughs) um, but we really dove in, (laughs) <laughs> and, you know, we have our little farm and it was really important for us to be more connected to our food sources, you know, mm-hmm. and I think that's just such a huge part of holistic health is being, mm-hmm. you know, we've lost as a society, we have lost that connection to where our food comes from. You mm-hmm. know, people don't know, um, and I'm just still learning myself, you know, mm-hmm. um, your food doesn't come from the grocery store, you know, (laughs) we really wanted to understand that better and have our kids understand that better and be able to, you know, take care of ourselves and, you know, know what it does take to raise meat, raise, you know, grow vegetables, grow our food. Yeah. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. Well, and that plays into almost my next question of, I mean, we, you mentioned that craniosacral supports, a physical, emotional, and spiritual, which, I mean, that goes back to the chakra system as well, and just living a holistic life in general. But um, do you find, like, because if people are coming to you and they're they're off balance in either their spiritual life or they're eating junk food, mm-hmm. um, do you find that a struggle with healing those pieces or how does that, how does it, it can be, I think it depends it? on, yeah, it depends on the willingness of the person, I you see. know, they are working with, because a lot of people do say they want to feel better, but then when you're like, you need to quit eating this crap, they're like, <laughs> eh, I don't want to do that though, you know, so right. there's a willingness aspect there, but I also think, I mean, with craniosacral, like I said, a large part of what we work with is that cerebral spinal fluid, and um, that fluid, it's considered to have an intelligence in it you know, and, and a potency. And that's, you know, it's called the breath of life in a lot of craniosacral and, you know, that is our health. And so the more, you know, in that cerebral spinal fluid, it, it uh, regenerates like every four to six hours in our system. Oh, wow. okay. And it basically takes waste out of our, you know, that central nervous system and mm-hmm. then nourishes. That's how your brain gets nourishment is okay. through that cerebral spinal fluid. So the more you can do to increase potency by working with that, the more health will spread, you know, and like William Sutherland, who is one of the kind of, um, instrumental in developing craniosacral therapy. He said, um, it's the practitioner's responsibility to find health. Anyone can find disease. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really true. And that's something we overlook. Like we're so busy looking for the disease. We don't look at health. And if you think about it, like we, um, we know disease spreads, germs spread, well, so does health if it's given the opportunity, right? Yeah. It's And it has to, like, that's yeah. just balance and homeostasis. And right. we don't think about it like that. We don't think about the fact that health can spread too. So right. because of that, like, if someone is working on one area, there is the definite potential for that to spread, you know? Yeah. And if you're working with that cerebrospinal fluid, if you think about it, your brain's really purpose is to maintain health in your body. Right. Like, if you, you know, that's what our brains do. They are, they are there to make sure every, all the signals they send, everything is for our health of our system, body, mind, and soul, I think, you know? Right. And so yeah. the more you're doing to increase that, you can't go wrong with that. Like that's Not just completely. absolutely healing on many yeah. levels. Well, and that's when we talked about even like the root chakra and like, mm-hmm. I mean, if that's rocky to start with, then you're building everything else, your health, your chakras, however you want to think of it. Yeah. on sand basically exactly. right so it's like yeah. the more you can heal and solidify that initial chakra and then each one of them is going to become more stable just by being like oh well, we're not built on sand anymore <laughs> exactly. right it's like it's just the whole system is having an opportunity to solidify and yeah right. that's well and I think even back to your point I was just thinking with just the way me- western medicine is and why 
I just love finding people like you and modalities like this really where we're just going to the doctors. And like you said, it's focused on disease. Yeah. And then I'm going to give you some drugs that will really just numb you. They're not, exactly. they, I don't actually know it's why symptoms. this disease is being caused. Yeah. I'm yeah. just going to give you a drug and it, <laughs> it makes yeah. me so upset for the world. And from my experience, it was with um, getting pregnant. It was okay. like, they're like, okay, I was having, my hormones were off so that, you know, I went there like, but don't worry about it. We can get you a pill and force your body into pregnancy. And I'm like, there's obviously <laughs> something way bigger going on here. Right. If my hormones are off, yeah. so let's, let's address that for my long-term hormonal health as a female <laughs> in exactly. my, at that point, my late twenties, you know, and it right. was just that, like, we'll just give you a pill. I'm like, but then what's that going to do to me down the road? Right. Exactly. Like if you're, if you had given your son Prozac, yeah. what would that have done for him? Like yeah, a brain all for the rest drug. of his life. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. That's and that's, funny. you know, even in Western medicine, preventative care, all they're doing is searching for something wrong, you know, searching yeah. and, and there's no focus on actual health and maintaining health. And how do you get, and like you said, what's causing these things? There's no focus on that. We just throw a pill at some symptoms yeah. and, you know, kind of hope for the best and see what happens later. And it's, yeah, it's so sad. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Well, and I think having that healing of like, we are all humans living this life and there's traumatic things that happen and our parents are well-intentioned, but <laughs> sometimes, right. So it's like, as an adult, taking the ownership of that and being yeah. like, this isn't working. What's off here. Let's get to the root of it. Let's yeah. understand why I'm programmed this way, why my body is acting this way, because our body wants to live in health, right? Okay. If we give yes. it the opportunity to, it wants yes. to, and that will spread. So, oh, I just love this so much. And it's so fascinating that yeah, it's just able, <laughs> you're able to do it. And from the experience like for me lying there last week, it's so calming and mellow. It feels like obviously you have got lots of, you know what you're doing. But for me, it was just like, I really don't know that I've experienced anything like that deep and calming and just, I like to say hold space a lot, but you were just holding space for my body to be like, ah, do whatever you need to do. And I had no idea what you was, but it, right. my body was obviously doing that, you know? Right. Yeah. And that's, I think my favorite thing, I agree. I mean, for me, uh, you know, I've had a lot of craniosacral work obviously through my training and everything. And, uh, I, it's the only thing like it that I've found, you know, there's other great things that I really enjoy, but craniosacral is just, it's different. And I think part of that difference is it, ha it, it does come at working with people from a different way than a lot in that aspect of, that we were just talking about where, it doesn't look at the body as having dysfunction. It looks at that dysfunction as, wow, this body is working so well. It's working so hard to protect this person that it's created this, what we would call dysfunction, right? right and yeah. so by recognizing it and instead of viewing it as, you know, mo even most like natural modalities go at things as like, okay, we have to fix this. We have to change it. Um, craniosacral really looks at it like, with gratitude, like, thank you for working so hard to protect this body, you know, and then just kind of working with the body to help it recognize we don't need that protection any longer. You can let go of that now. Uh -huh. And I think that that is such a different just treatment uh, foundation than a lot of things that are out there. No, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I love that. What's I going to say in regards to that? But I, <laughs> it might come back to me. <laughs> um, be, so who, I mean, you probably get all kinds of different clients, yeah. but who is there, who would you recommend it to? It seems like, honestly, we all need to be kept in balance. Like as much as our bodies can do it, like we still live in this, we're still in this human experience in this crazy yeah. world that we live in. And so right. who would you recommend this to? Yeah. I mean, of course I do think everyone should have it, but <laughs> um, yeah. 
but there are definitely certain um, people that I do think, you know, really do need it. And, you know, I think a lot of my practice, I see a lot of great results for people with autoimmune disorders, which are just so out of control in our world. There's so many autoimmune disorders and, you know, that's generally your body attacking itself. So what, what better way to work with that than, you know, working with the central nervous system to help retrain it to calm down, you know, um, and then there's, you know, PTSD, anxiety, um, craniosacral, just, it, again, it works with the, that, that brain, that mind in such a different way. Um, and it, it kind of like hits both, you know, you can do counseling and I'm certainly not a counselor, but craniosacral kind of can get both sides of that to a point, the physical and the, the emotional, you know, um, which can be really helpful. Um, and then, I mean, common conditions that I work with are like any kind of TMJ dysfunction, um, sciatica, low back pain, migraines, traumatic brain injury, a lot of traumatic brain injury. Interesting. Um, okay. Yeah. So those are kind of some, gotcha. some of the big ones that I see a lot of. Is it fair to say though, that anyone could come in and benefit from it? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of me. I wasn't, I mean, mm -hmm. I love that you're a doula as well. I mean, you've got, you've got so many skills and that you were like, oh, I can work on baby. And right, I'm just right. always like, yeah, I just believe there's, there's always something that could be balanced. And plus I just love experiencing all of the different well, and that's, I think for a lot of people, because craniosacral really does take you into that really deep rest and relaxed part of your nervous system and kind of um, that like alpha brain state that we can get into where it's like, you're not really asleep, but you're not awake and you're just super relaxed. And, you know, for anybody who has a job or a kid or a spouse, you know, we need that sometimes just to be able to reset, you know, yeah. and it really does kind of reset you to, it shifts your perspective. So when you walk out, you know, you could come in stressed and anxious and you walk out just kind of like, oh, like you, you, regained your perspective, you're grounded again, you can carry on in a calmer, more effective way. Completely. And that's what I was going to say before is that just with the society that we live in now, we have almost disconnected from our bodies, right? Yeah. Like yeah. that is my body and it is an issue and it doesn't yes. function the way I want it to function exactly. rather than this is my temple and this is how do I nurture her? And, oh, there's this life force energy running through my spine. And how do I make sure that I'm supporting that because she can then support me, you know, like yes. yeah. that holistic piece, which I struggled with for so long, but I'm like, once you can just embrace your body and like love on her as you would love right. on your kid, That's right? right. And just start yeah. to see it that way. You just start to believe you start to treat her differently too, right? Suddenly you're like, Absolutely. the junk food actually doesn't seem that appealing. And you're like, actually, yes, I'm going to go get so craniosacral because I'm like, yeah. I want her to feel like, and you yeah. can just, you just start to live in a different way when you can embrace like, this is my body. We are one. And yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Oh, so good. So my session was, you had me propped up beautifully on soft, like cozy pillows and stuff, obviously for my pregnancy position, but is that, is the standard position for people to be lying down? Will you explain a little bit for what people can expect if they come to see you? Yeah. So yeah, generally, yes, I have people just laying on their backs on the table. Um, for craniosacral, you don't really dress down. Um, you can just stay, you know, I do recommend people wear like sweatpants or leggings, something like loose and comfortable. That's easy to work through, but I generally am working through, um, clothing when I'm feeling, you know, like the sacrum or the back or anything like that. Um, and you know, it's, it's interesting because a lot of times when people first get treatments, they don't feel a lot of what's going on, um, as far as those adjustments, because they're very minute, right? right. Um, I think the cranial bones all move like 40 microns, which is like half the width of a piece of paper. It's these tiny little movements, wow. but when you're tapped into that system, they feel huge. They truly mm. do. It's just this really weird, amazing, fun thing. And the more someone gets craniosacral, the more you will start to feel those movements as they happen. And that's really fun. I just had a client um, the other day and I've been working with her for, you know, really since I moved here. And um, 
she really like, I was working with her cranial, that cerebral spinal fluid wave. And there's other waves. There's also a mid tide that we work with as well. And I was working, going back and forth between those waves. And after her session, she was like, that was really weird. I've never felt that before. I felt like this wave, like, and I was like, that's what I was doing. Like, I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was just, it's such a fun thing to get to be there with people as they start to feel those things, because it's like this light just goes on and you're awakened to this whole system of your body. That's so vital. I mean, it really is your life force. And like to, to, it's very empowering to like, be like, I can feel that. And I can, like, if you can feel it, you know, like I've gotten enough craniosacral work at this point, I can like lay down and get my sacrum to unwind. Wow. Just because I know how, you know, like I can think about it and make that happen and like make little adjustments with my hands or whatever. Um, but anybody can do that, you mm -hmm. know, and that's empowering. Mm -hmm. Like I want my clients to learn how to do these things and mm -hmm. you have so much more, we have so much more control of our health and our bodies than we're led to believe. Yes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we only knew our own power, that would yes. <laughs> change the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So are most of your sessions about an hour? Um, yeah, I do a lot of two-hour sessions too. So oh, yeah. I do, yeah. Um, maybe about half and half, I'd say. Gotcha. A lot of people, you know, and if someone is dealing with a lot of stuff, two hours is better, obviously. Right. And a lot yeah. of the techniques that I do, you know, like I said, if someone has some sacral stuff going on, I might be with that sacrum for 40 minutes, you know, so yeah. if we want to do something else too, although that's very full body to be working any, at any place in that cerebral spinal fluid flow. Um, yeah. A lot of people do prefer two hour sessions. Well, and then you said too, that really it takes like 40 hours for those changes to really because you're doing the work, but of course it needs to settle and your body needs to adjust. So 48 hours. Yeah. hours. yeah. So that's, that's uh, another thing that, you know, a lot of times people don't feel the effects of the treatment for like 48 hours, because it always takes our body about 48 hours to process anything that happens to us through our central nervous system. And so when you get a craniosacral treatment, you leave, but your body continues to make these minute little adjustments, um, on that system for the next 48 hours. So <laughs> you know, it tends to be, and again, it's not like, um, a big release that's going to happen. So, you know, we're kind of geared towards those sorts of, uh, changes in our body. And with craniosacral, you know, it's more like you wake up and you just a couple hours into your day, you're like, Oh, my back hasn't hurt at all. It's just like a feeling more like you're living the way you're supposed to be. Right. I like, yeah, living abundantly and, um, things are good and you're balanced. Mm, so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So next I was going to ask you about people changing people's lives dramatically, but your son, your story about your son alone, holy cow. I mean, and he's, he just started NIC, right? Like he's now. Yeah, he's, like, he's 16, but he's doing dual enrollment okay. at NIC and he's okay. fantastic. And yeah, he's, um, I mean, yeah. really it's of all my family, I probably treat him least. And I think that's because he had that work when he was so little, you know, that like things just formed a little bit differently for him. Right. And, you know, but he's also, um, and I think because of that, having that work when he was little, uh, very, very aware, like he, he knows too, when he needs a treatment or an adjustment, like he'll, he'll tell me. And Amazing. well, and yeah. just, just to think about how much that changed his life. I mean, yeah. That's so awesome. I love it. It. <laughs> it really, truly is. Yeah. <laughs> do you see many children? I know you said you do. do. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, since I just restarted my practice here not that long ago, um, I've had not as many kiddos in as I was used to in my old practice. So I'm hoping to get more in. I miss, I miss work. I like working with kids a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and I love that because I, I think I talked to you about bringing even Beckett in because mm -hmm. he's three and... I mean, just the birthing process and just the first couple of years of life, I'm like, it's a, it's a lovely experience. So I'm just like, why wouldn't I come and bring him to yeah. you? And yeah. You know, just, yeah. And kids really tend to enjoy it, you know? And I mean, of course, uh, working with a three-year-old's not like working with an adult at all. And they're not mm -hmm. going to lay there for an hour and the session's <laughs> not going to be an hour, right? right they're not right, right. because they don't need an hour. Um, but it is interesting because kids do really tend to enjoy it, which, um, 
you know, I think they're just, like I said, they're so in touch with their little systems in a just more pure way than we are as adults yeah. that it, they just, they, it feels good. They get it. Yeah. Love that. So then yeah. when you talk about working even with unborn babies and pregnant moms, sure. Yeah. Benefit? So, I mean, the benefit to that is, I mean, it's super fun, right? <laughs> for me and for the, for the mom too. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it is like, I, I think just to continue to work on that potency, even before birth, you know, cause that cerebral spinal fluid um, is so important in fetal development. It's what gives, you know, all the nourishment to all the soul, the cells to develop, you know, mm -hmm. so the more you can do just to kind of um, increase that potency, even in utero is going to benefit the baby. And then, I mean, there are like, I would never advertise that I do this, but I have, you know, been able to, um, you know, convince breech babies to turn around and do that kind of stuff. Oh, nice. I mean, craniosacral. So, um, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of benefits to it for that. And then too, like I, you know, I think I told you it's interesting because when I worked on a baby in utero a number of times, and then after birth, if mom and dad bring them in, there's this there's like a recognition, like the, you know, the baby will calm immediately. They're already familiar with that work. And that's a really cool thing. And just really, I think it's validating to the fact that this is a really effective, important work. Yeah. And that those babies, those little souls, like mm -hmm. they're yeah. looking to be in tune and to be connected and yeah. they're, yeah, they're, they're not helpless little beings. They're very <laughs> much right. like no. ready yeah. to be. They're right. very powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> Yay. Well, this is a totally sidebar question, right? But I just love, 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 like you're the type of person that's obviously living your life just across the board. Like the fact that you came from the city and now you're in North Idaho and you have an Instagram account for your animals alone, because now you have, like, I'm just curious, like homesteading life. I know you've been in it a year, but what does that mean to your family? And how is it, how has it just changed like your bigger picture way that you live life? Oh, you know, that's a great question. Um, I would say, I mean, my life today is like unrecognizable from what it was, you know, a year ago before we moved. Seriously, like um, we have always tried to really uh, eat well and eat organic and buy good quality food. That's been very important to us, but um, to be raising it. And I mean, like, like I'm up at five o'clock every single morning to go milk the goats and then feed all the animals. And it's a lot of work and it's a lot of work for all of us. You know, everybody helps out. And, um, but I don't, I, it also, I think we all feel like I've never so much felt like I'm actually living the way I'm supposed to be, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, no, sure. like it is a lot of work and it's exhausting, but it's, it's like, good work. And it's, like I said, I just feel like this is, this is it. This is how I'm supposed to be living. And that that's awesome. huge. I mean, yeah. that's priceless. Absolutely. Right. I mean, talk about life force energy when you can feel that way and your fingers in the dirt and connected yep. and to be outside. I'm sure it's gorgeous where you yeah. are at 5 a.m. every morning. <laughs> it is. It truly is. And I mean, to get out and just the peace and the solitude and yeah. the fresh air and, you know, all of it, it's, um, it's amazing. It really mm -hmm. truly is. I wouldn't trade it for anything. And it's funny because like we joke, like we're never going to be able to go on vacation again or anything. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, like can you get like, people to come over and look after the goats? Not quite as yeah, right? dogs, you right? Know? <laughs> and, uh, but like, we don't want to, we don't, right. you know, like yeah. this is like, and I was just trying to tell someone, I had someone who was inviting me to a retreat and I'm like, oh, you know, I have a farm. It's really hard for me to get away. And they're like, that's why you need it all the more. I'm like, I actually live at my retreat. Like, yeah. <laughs> isn't that the dream, right? Yes. Yeah. That's the dream. Create a retreat yeah. in your life every single day. That's like, right. someone like, said that to me once, and I was like, genius. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just it. I'm like, I'm doing, like, this is like so many dreams come true for me. Oh, like, I don't need to get away. Why would I want to get away? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I was even the same though with having kids. Like, I think for me, I was like, I don't need kids. Like that sounds like a lot of hard work. And now right. like when I first had my, had my first, it was obviously like 
you just don't know what you don't know. And you're like, yes, they're hard work, but they're also life-changing and amazing. And like, so like rewarding and challenged me and helped me grow into a whole new human being that I wouldn't be without kids, (laughs) you know, but before I was like, no, that's just a lot of work. I'm not going to. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh, oh, I just love that. Cause it, that's like the holistic life right there. You're yeah. living it and your work is doing that and you're radiating that to the world in so many ways. It's amazing. Oh, thank you. Love it. Thank yes. You. <laughs> um, so how do you, I mean, how do you keep yourself balanced? I know <laughs> <laughs> you still need the self-love and all of that, right? right? So right. how do you keep yourself balanced through all that? That has been a challenge. I mean, that's always been a challenge for me because I'm kind of a doer. I'm pretty driven. Um, and that now having this farm is definitely more challenging because yeah. when you have a farm and a hundred some animals, there is literally always like not something to do, like 70 somethings to do, right? <laughs> like yeah. all the time, every single day. And so I've really have committed lately. I mean, I do things for myself, you know, I get acupuncture regularly and I yeah. do um, some, some self-care stuff like that. Um, but I'm really committed, and this is just very recent, actually, like in the last month, to I have to take like a Sabbath day, like a rest day, and just, yeah. you know, commit to I'm not going to, well, I mean, obviously, I still have to go out and do the basics and feed everybody and take care of, but that's it, like nothing else that day, um, and I just have to let things go, and that's really hard for me to let things go, but I also know like I can't continue on like mm-hmm. I have been for the last year if I don't start doing that, so yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and then too, I do think it is really helpful and balancing for me. I am outside more now than I've ever been. And that's been a really big grounding, obviously. Um, yeah. it's, it's a huge help for me um, just in keeping yeah. that balance and, you know, yeah. Just yeah. hanging out with the animals. And- <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think also being probably in the line of work that you're in. I mean, I say that, but you see how many therapists or counselors are then also like fried and like yeah. out in the back smoking cigarettes, right? right like, exactly. wait, wait, yeah. wait, you so, know this, you know better, but yeah. obviously you've had like the reflection on the last year alone just to be like, okay, yeah. Sarah needs some Sarah time to like not just be working all the time if you want to like yeah. do it for the long haul and really exactly. and maintain, like keep the joy in it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Love it. <laughs> um, so how do people find you? What's the best way? Because I just think, like I said, I haven't heard a lot about craniosacral, but I think the more and more I talk about it, even just in the last week, people are like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And it was interesting to come here um, because it's not as known in this area as it was back where I came from, you know? Okay. So there is a lot of, um, you know, questions about it. Um, the easiest way to find me is probably my website, which is okay. tendedrootswellness.com. And then, you know, my, all my phone numbers on there, you can call or text, you can book on there. Um, my Instagram link is on there too. Um, and you Perfect. can message me through that as well. Awesome. And I'll put all of those in the show notes and link awesome. them as Thank well. You. So people can find okay. you. Right. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to mention before I ask my final question? I don't think so. Okay. Well, in my definition of vibrant, which is glowing from the inside out mm-hmm. um, to connect with our true selves, our communities, and our planet, are there three people or organizations here locally who have inspired you um, just in the last year? Um, let's see. I think the farmer's market, you know, is a big one for me. Just yeah. we have a booth at the farmer's market ourselves next year. And oh, nice. I really feel like if we could get back to that kind of a system where, you know, people are buying locally and seasonally, the impact that would have on health as a community, I think would be just mind blowing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the more we can do those kinds of, you know, farmer's markets and those little things, the better, I think that's, you know, just a really amazing way to go. Um, what are some other ones? I just recently heard about from a client, um, farm to table school in post falls, which is like a farm immersion school for kids six to 12, where they basically go and like learn how to farm and how to do husband, animal husbandry and, um, 
I think that's amazing. Like I'm, totally. I, I'm, I guess I'm probably too old to go, but I'm like, I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Do they need volunteers? <laughs> yeah. Well, in education, you know, we did homeschool our kids and so education and like that kind of, um, I guess like learning real skills, that's really important to me. And I think that that's something that we're kind of lacking in a lot of areas. So mm -hmm. things like that really excite me. Um, For sure. Well, like you were yeah. saying before, just like connecting our kids to our food sources, right? To get back to like, where do the carrots come from? Like, right. no, they don't just magically appear at the grocery store. They're either right. sprayed with pesticides somewhere or, yeah. right? Like yeah. this is the exactly. story of like how the health starts in general. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 And then um, I know too, this is also like education, I guess. And I, I don't have a lot of info about this one yet. I need to get it, but there's a farm, uh, Baba Blacktail Farm. And I think she's just <laughs> north on 95 and um, she raises sheep and okay. she has workshops and, and on, you know, teaching homesteaders how to raise sheep, how to process sheep, um, all that kind of stuff. And that's something that we would like to do some sheep next year. And um, I'm really nice. excited to kind of get more in touch with her. I love that. Yeah. And to realize there's this many resources around here. There's people doing yeah. so amazing many. things, right? From yeah. like food to therapies to all of it. That's, right. I mean, that's why I started this podcast because I'm like, I right. know they're not all in San Francisco and New York. I know <laughs> there are people here in our community yes. doing this. Yeah. I just have to find them, you know? So, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Awesome. Well, Sarah, this has been such a good conversation and I'm just, I'm thrilled about this. It's like, it was such a lovely experience and the fact that it can be for kids and the fact, yeah, going through it with you feeling baby in there was just, right. it was awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. You.